a member of the uh, top ten, Ernest Kendall. <laughs> member of the top ten of the class, Janet Potwin Crow. <laughs> the class salutatorian, Chris Pompelli Patterson. James Richardson. <laughs> Ellen Sawyer. <laughs> Another member of the top ten, Carol Sawyer Corneal. <laughs> and another member of the top ten, Paul Sawyer. <laughs> For those of you who may or may not know, the Sawyers are triplets. <laughs> we don't know if there was another set of triplets that ever graduated from Woodstock Union High School since. But we think when we were little, we wanted to be astronauts, flying to the moon, famous actors starring in feature films, doctors who saved lives every day, and even superheroes. While a few of us seniors still want to have such prestigious occupations, most of us have changed our minds many times about what we want to be when we grow up, and some still may not know. But no matter what we decide to do with our lives, the superhero will always stay with us. Just as superheroes have their secret identities, we also have hidden talents and abilities that most cannot see. For example, one of my classmates has been characterized by many as a ditz, only caring about clothes, shoes, and boys. However, many do not know that she went to conservation camp and has her hunting license. Most would not think that she'd be able to survive without her Gucci bag or pink stilettos, but that is far from the truth. She has the survival skills and the common sense that will lead her to success no matter where she goes in life. There is another girl in our grade who has been known for her, at times seemingly dim comments, yet she's extremely intelligent. She could go on for hours about current issues like inflation or increasing gas prices and gets extremely excited about Civil War reenactments. I wish that I knew half as much about our economy as she does. A third and final example is a girl who has intimidated many throughout the years. She is loud and opinionated, but has a shy and nurturing side that many do not see or could not even imagine. However, I've seen it, and it's a type of maturity that surpasses many of her peers. These virtues and qualities that are kept within us are of vital importance to our nature, but only we can choose when to use them. High school is a time when many of those talents become visible. We rip off the costume and become confident in who we really are. The last four years, I have watched my classmates reveal their own superpowers by being proud of who they are and thus have encouraged me to take off my own costume and cape. Over the last year, the spirit of Woodstock Union High School has increased, due in part to our class, the class of 2008. There are many members of our class who are not only full of enthusiasm and dedication, but aren't afraid to be themselves. They don't care what others think of them because they are proud of who they are, and they never take that for granted. They exhibit a self-confidence that few can ignore, and which others, like myself, can only hope for. Take Julian Jantos, for example. During one of the best Thursday assemblies, he courageously volunteered to dress up in an outlandish outfit and walk a runway in front of the entire school. He ended up in a pink dress, colorful wig, and big white platform shoes, and he worked it. <laughs> he wasn't afraid or embarrassed, and even if he was, he transformed that fear into positive, positive energy and humor. Or take Andrew Kennedy, who dressed up in the wasp suit for a variety of sports games, while doing cartwheels and flips around the fields. Just like when he becomes a character in a play, he became the Woodstock Wasp, and his pers personality shined through the suit. A last example is the infamous streakers. Don't worry, I won't mention your names. Who only a few days ago bared it all. They were confident in themselves, and it is with this confidence that the senior class has brought back to life a spirit that for so long now has been overlooked. I remember the day perfectly. I was standing at our defensive end of the soccer field, anxiously watching our offense try and put the ball in the net. I don't remember what team we were playing or what the ultimate outcome, 
outcome was, but it doesn't matter because it's not the game that I remember. What I remember is hearing what sounded like an army of people, but when I looked over, all I saw were four senior boys. They were covered in green paint with the school's initials colorfully painted on their stomachs. So when they stood by one another, they spelled out W-U-H-S, and the spirit only grew from there. For one of our playoff games, almost the whole high school was there to watch, which I admit is pretty rare for girls' sports. Everyone was on their feet screaming, and ten or more boys paraded around our field, all painted up, spelling out, We Heart W-U-H-S Girls. And the thing was, not all of these boys were seniors. The support and camaraderie that had been epitomized by the seniors was being understood and adopted by the underclassmen. When we won and everyone stormed the field, that was an experience that will never be forgotten. At that moment, it didn't matter what grade we were in or who our friends were. All that mattered was that we were part of Woodstock. We were finally united as a school. Another moment that I will remember for years to come was our Halloween Best Thursday. Every year, students are encouraged to dress up in their Halloween costumes as a way of promoting school spirit. However, over the last couple of years, the student response to this activity has been less than satisfactory. But this year, things were different. When usually only 20% of the senior class participates in the school-wide event, this year around 90% participated. And needless to say, but I'll say it anyway, we won for school spirit. We put embarrassment aside for the sake of school spirit, and as it turns out, it wasn't that embarrassing after all. It was at that moment when we stood as a class in front of the whole school, dressed up like fools, that we united. It didn't matter what we looked like or what other people were saying about us. We were the seniors, and we were unstoppable. While each of these moments may have only lasted a few minutes, they taught the students of the school what it means to overcome diversity and just be yourself. These precious moments have taught us to forget about our differences and rather focus on the big picture. In 10 years, we will not look back on the events and remember what a fool this or that person made of themselves. What we will remember was the way in which we utilized our individual confidence and united for our class, our school, our community. Back in middle school, we were judged by what clothes we wore, what sports we played, and what lunch table we, table we sat at. Now, there are no more great expectations. We are now proud of who we are as individuals and do not solely seek the approval of others around us. We aren't afraid to be ourselves or step out of our comfort zone into an unfamiliar place. And that's exactly what we are doing now, leaving the comfort of a past life and heading into unknown territory. However, these hidden talents will guide the way and transform us into the people we will become. The qualities will continue to carry us throughout life, no matter where we go or what we do. The lessons we have learned, we will utilize and further develop in college, in our jobs, and in the world. Our capes will come off and our true nature will be seen. I have learned so much from my classmates about being confident in myself. I now know that I can't be afraid of being different because by being different, I only limit myself, and by doing that, I can't do my best. I've learned that it's okay to let my guard down and be vulnerable at times, because it is at those times that I learn the most. I will take these lessons with me for the rest of my life, and never forget the moments set of to find personal achievement. So classmates, thank you. Through your actions, I've learned about the person I want to be when I grow up.